Before I get started, please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any new material that I'm going to be producing in the future. And that helps us grow the channel, grow more content, and help people like you. And we'll go line by line and explain what's going on here. Uh, and then we will see how we can run it. And I want to make sure that everybody is able to run this simple code. Okay. Uh, so we start with the package declaration. They said Go is built for large team. Every piece of code is inside a package. So when you have um, uh, any, any file of Go that you start, we start with the package keyword. And then you define a package name. Uh, you can define many package names. The, the, packet, the main package has a special meaning. This is the package, the Go runtime will look when it's running and executing. <clears throat> okay, so package main, uh, this is the package. After that, uh, we usually have imports. Import is the way to get code from another package. When you look at the Go language and when you start the Go uh, program, it has very little inside. There are very few uh, predefined built-in functions that you can use. Apart from that, all the functionality is in other packages and you use an import statement to do that. You can, uh, you can do import like this. You can do also, uh, if you're importing just one package, you can do it in one line. That's also fine. Uh, I got to the habit of doing everything inside uh, the braces because most programs has, are importing more than just a single package. Uh, we have more than that. Um, after that, we have a definition of a function. So the definition of a function starts with func. That's the definition of the function. Uh, other languages has def or uh, um, Rust has FM, uh, uh, JavaScript has function, but every language is picking uh, whatever it wants. Uh, in Go, we have func, and then we have the function name, which is main, and this function has no arguments. So we don't have any arguments in the braces, but they're still mandatory. We need to write them down. And then we have the opening curly brace, and then inside we have some code, and then the closing curly brace. And this function, main, which is inside the package main, is a special function. This is the function that the Go runtime is running when a program starts. It looks for main.main .main and it's going to run. And inside this package, we have, inside the body of main, we have only one, fun, only one uh, statement. We are calling fmt.println. Okay, so fmt, uh, sometimes they say it's pronounced fmt. Uh, this is the name of the package. Uh, we, we need to state the name of the package before the name of the functions, right? In some languages, you can use the, the, just the function name, just print LM because you input it. In Go, by design, the package name always appears before the function or the type that you use. It has to be that, like that. And then you have the dot and then the name of the function. The, the name of the function is called print LM, and the capital P is also something which is required by the language. Uh, in Go, we don't have private, protected, and, and many other things. We have exported and non-exported symbols. Exported symbols can be used from outside the package, meaning uh, we can use println from our own package, and unexported symbols can use only within the same package. So nobody can call main other than other code inside this main package. Uh, and the, the distinction between exported symbols and unexported symbols is simple. If they start with an uppercase letter, they are exported. Otherwise, they're not exported. And that's it. There's nothing more to remember. There's no special keyword. Uh, there's no uh, anything to learn. You see capital letter, you know it's exported. Lowercase letter, it's fine. It's not exported. It's internal to the package. And that's it. Okay, so we use the println. And the FMT package has several printing. Uh, this is the package where you print stuff out. Uh, it has a, a several printing um, function. The one to start with P is going to print them out to the standard output. Uh, 
There are some with, that start with F, which are going to print to something which looks like a file. It's called an IO writer, and we'll talk about that. Uh, and there are some that start with S, which create a new string. Uh, so it's a way to format a new string. And uh, then at the end, meaning that it's going to add a new line to what is being printed. Right? There's also a print without the new line, and this is going to print without the new line. And we have a function call, so again, opening parentheses and then the parameters to the function. In this case, we have a single parameter to the function, which is a string. String starts with double quotes, and that's the only way, and uh, that's, sorry, that's not the only way, but that this is one of the two ways to create strings in Go. And as you can see from the hot symbol at the end, strings in Go are Unicode strings. We have built-in support in Go uh, to Unicode. So um, again, it's a modern language. It's been around. Uh, it, and Google is dealing a lot with Unicode, so you can see the influence and why it's important. Today. So we have this code. Uh, one thing about the formatting of this code, right? You can think that you want to uh, change things, maybe add some spaces and uh, add a space here. But if you will see, once I'm saving my code, you see that it's coming back, right? So there is a tool called Go FMT, like the package FMT, which formats your code. And all the Go code out there almost without exception, is going through this FMT code. So the ID that you're going to pick, either uh, what I'm using or Visual Studio Code or Golang, all of them are going to format the code the same way. And there is a saying in the Go community that we all love the Go FMT and we all hate the Go FMT. Because we love it, it you don't need to think, right? This is the way Go code is written. It's using tabs, uh, the curly braces go on top, uh, we usually don't use semicolons, even though uh, you can have them. So uh, this is, uh, sorry, uh, this is also valid Go, but once I'm saving it, Go FMT is going to remove the semicolon because it's not required. So the code is uniformly indented, which is nice because uh, people are used to seeing one way of doing Go. Everybody hates it because everybody has their own opinion about how it should indent the code, right? Uh, it's like this episode in uh, uh, what's the serious about the startup with the pipe right here? Silicon Valley. The Silicon Valley, right. So this guy is breaking uh, up with his girlfriend because uh, he's using tabs and she's using uh, spaces. So if they were using Go, they would probably be still together. Mm -hmm.